what I thought I'd do here is another little import export experiment. So um, I was thinking one of the problems you have in Bryce is that transparency is very expensive and also trees are very expensive in terms of render time. So what I've done, I've just created a tree at random with the control there and I'm going to lay it down on its back. So uh, this way around, holding the shift key down will allow you to do it in discrete stages. I'll drop it onto the ground. You don't need the ground. I'll get rid of that and go to the document setup and go to a one-to-one -one aspect ratio and I'll use 512 specifically because I'm going to use the terrain lab for this. So I'm just zooming in at the moment. Now bear in mind the uh, aspect ratio of the screen has been changed because of changing the document setup so the camera's field of view is going to be no longer aligning with the wireframe view because that only occurs when you've got a, a 3 to 4, 4 to 3 aspect ratio which was the original setup so it makes life a little bit more difficult so I'll bring the tree in and you can see we're looking down on it from above I'm going to change this to uh, altitude mask so we get a height map that I'm going to apply to a terrain and to get a um, better resolution for this I'm going to go to document setup because it won't take long to render I'll render it out at uh, 1024 or uh, you could do that if you wanted higher resolution yet but I don't want to make the process needlessly long-winded so just rendering out that height map and I'm going to save that so file save as height map and now I'm going to capture um, a basic lighting setup for this. So I'm going to sky and fog and I'm going to set the atmosphere to off, set it fully white, go into the sky lab, image based lighting, use HDRI image, use sky only, uh, sky dome only, use sky. Turn the quality down, set to render in scene so we can see we've got something going off here. Uh, it doesn't need much specularity, I'm just going to provide a bit of general lighting onto this. The sun's been automatically disabled, so it's just a sort of general ambient lighting we're getting. Now I need to remember to switch it altitude mask off. We'll see that probably a bit on the bright side. I need to make the atmosphere fully black now because the white outline might cause a problem with what I'm going to do in a bit. So all I'm doing here is setting this up so it's lit but there's no specific light source so this is if you like an ambient uh, light render I've only used 16 light sources to give a, a general sort of lighting so this is going to be the image that's applied to the terrain that's going to have the height map that I've just created so it's just taking a little while to do out the anti-aliasing pass which shows one of the drawbacks of putting a lot of trees in your renders in Bryce it can take quite a long time to render out the leaves which is why I was looking at this um, possible workaround uh, using meshes though it's not ideal it's going to be like billboards but billboards in Bryce have the disadvantage because they use transparency but this isn't going to use transparency this is going to use actual geometry so I'll save that and I'll just call this one image right so I've saved those two and now I'll just um, launch a fresh instance of Bryce to do this next little bit of a conversion. Sometimes when you export meshes, um, Bryce crashes, which is a shame. So I'll bring in a terrain, any old terrain, get rid of the ground. We don't need it anyway. And uh, on the material for this, I'll choose, um, I'll set it to default grey, put a blob in diffuse, switch to picture, go into the texture source editor and load in the image that I saved just then. So that's applied the image parametric to the surface of this terrain. And I edit the terrain and set the resolution up to match the resolution of the height map. Go to picture, go down here, select the height map. And what I want to do here is using this control, you can open and close it with that in case yours isn't open to start with. You can just lift the edge of this bracket up. It's a little bit fiddly to get hold of this control. And you'll see that the background's got a maroon colour. And that means it's not going to uh, use that part of the mesh. So it's not going to draw that. Now if I'll just tip this on its end so we can see what we've got. I'm probably looking at the back of it there. Oh no, it's turned out the right way. And then I'm going to crush this mesh down a bit because it's a bit too thick. So this, if you like, is now our mesh billboard. And this has got the texture just in the diffuse channel and at this point I'm going to edit and export that object so I want to do this as uh, 
obj format there we go and call this tree mesh one okay now at this point you get to the terrain export uh, dialog and this is where Bryce sometimes crashes when you start increasing this resolution here so I want it to be a high enough resolution that uh, it's got some detail on those leaves. I don't know how far to go. Obviously, it's going to use more memory up when we bring it back in if we use too many polygons. So it all depends how far away this tree is going to appear in your scene. So lots of trees in the distance, low. Trees for the f closer to the foreground, higher resolution. Well, I'll just export it about 200,000. And um, the, the picture size doesn't matter, so I usually just set that down because I've already saved the picture here, and I could just bring that back in. So I'll just export that takes a few moments to export so at this point if uh, if I go back to this scene because it exported fine and I'll reset the sky go into the sky lab sun and moon make sure that intensity is at one 100 so that's the default sky I'm going to change the document setup now back to something that I can use to appropriately show you um, was it um, 69 I can never remember the combination of those two 850 whoops 850 okay so that's giving me a nice full screen view and now take this tree and stand it back up onto its feet right and uh, drop that down there I'll put a ground plane in if you hold control key down it should bring it in in default gray so I've got a reference point and now a file import object and I'll bring in the mesh that I've created so that's brought my tree mesh in take a little while to load because of the complexity of the object okay that's my tree mesh let's see how that looks so a little bit flat on the trunk side of things as you can see and uh, the low resolution of the material is showing up there it looks in a bit pixelated I'll just zoom my camera in a bit it's not come out the same scale as the original tree either but that's to be expected go into the material lab here and I'm going to um, delete this alpha channel we're not using an alpha channel so I'll just delete that yeah and I'll load in my image which is a high resolution one that I prepared okay and I'm going to add it into the ambient channel now and provide some ambient because I got a general ambient lighting so I can now combine that more complex lighting with the very basic lighting of the uh, of the Bryce scene so it's got the impression of it having some uh, depth obviously it's not perfect but you know we didn't, didn't think it was going to be perfect it's just an idea that I had that might or might not work so the advantage of so I'm just scaling it so it looks about the right size this approach is we're not using transparency we're using an actual mesh I'm going to uh, decrease the ambience on that it was a bit excessive getting a bit carried away there and as a result we can instance this example here so if we go to edit an instance that's created an instance which means it's got a highly reduced memory footprint which means we can have more of these in the distance so now I'll, I'll widen the field of view and do a quick comparison between these so real tree and um, mesh tree and instance obviously the thinner the mesh the less depth it's going to have you can see the billboards from the shadow but if you had a lot of these you probably couldn't so now I don't know the answer to this so this is down to uh, testing what is the speed uh, if any advantage of using this approach so what I'm going to have to do is copy uh, copy this in and do a quick comparison between the two so if I, if I get rid of the other one for the moment and uh, I'll, I'll report render time so we'll do report render time and do a quick render of this now I've not tested this yet this is just uh, an idea I had uh, so I don't know whether there's going to be any uh, particular advantage or not in doing it this way so it's just a test this this is actual mesh so I'd hope that there's no transparency going on I can see from the processor usage that it, it's using um, it says 97 percent so that's not too bad so let's see where we are with that uh, 26 seconds in regular mode rendering right now well, it doesn't matter if I move it out of the way I'll, I'll, I'll move this tree into view so we've got rice tree now and see whether this renders faster or slower than the uh, previous example 
it looks like it's going to be faster, doesn't it? Ah, 11 seconds. Well, it turned out to be not such a good idea, but an interesting experiment, I think, to uh, to put forward. So, But it's not going to save you any render time, which is a bit of a surprise, because I thought the Bryce tree would be a bit less efficient than the, the copied mesh. Maybe if the mesh complexity was lower, but it was already looking it's already looking quite low resolution compared with the tree. Hmm. So there you go, an experiment that wasn't very successful, but a few ideas to explore perhaps. And uh, it at least shows you a, a bit about the import export object options there. So that's the end of that. Slower to use a mesh.